There are 31 different colleges in Cambridge, each with their unique architecture, traditions, and even the ducks can be different. In this video, we'll tackle how to pick the right college for you. I'll also talk about some frequently asked questions, including whether you can apply to certain colleges tactically to boost your chances of getting an offer from Cambridge University. Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. My name is Rohan. I'm a fifth year medical student studying at Cambridge University. It's application season, so I thought I'd make a video on the Cambridge colleges because I get quite a few queries about this and how to apply to them. We'll start by talking about what a college is. So Cambridge is known as as a collegiate university. This means instead of having a few main campuses where the students stay, there are mini campuses called colleges which are dotted around the city. Each college has its own accommodation, catering, and other facilities like libraries, social spaces, and some will even have stuff like gyms. I think this is one of the great things about Cambridge because the colleges are small enough so that you can know most people in a year and you can recognize them, but it's also diverse enough so you can meet new people. It also means that you're physically close to important important facilities like where to get hot food from and where to go to the library rather than having to commute long distances for these. In terms of your studies, your central teaching like your lectures and practicals, these are organised centrally by the faculty or department. So for medicine, the first three years of lectures and practicals are organised by the faculty of biology and the next three years are organised by the clinical school. But your small group teaching, so these are supervisions, these are run by the colleges. So each college has its own set of supervisors for each subject. You'll also be assigned a director of studies who oversees your academic progress and a pastoral tutor. You can talk about welfare issues and other avenues of support. The college also processes your application. So this leads some to think that you can apply tactically to certain colleges to boost your chances of getting in if they're less competitive. Considering the colleges, there are some where only certain applicants can apply to. So there are some female only colleges and some only for postgrad students. There's this really good webpage by the University of Cambridge where you can compare the admission statistics across all colleges for your chosen subject for the past five years. So you can use this to calculate the number of applicants per offers made and how many places they have to see which colleges are the most competitive and least competitive for your chosen subject. However, the university officially states that your choice of college does not affect your chance of receiving an offer. And this is because even if you apply to an oversubscribed college, if your application is strong, you'll be put into something called Called the winter pool. This is where other colleges can view your application and if they deem it to be strong and you to be a good fit for their college, then they can make you an offer. And this is quite a common way to get an offer. I think about 20% of applicants year on year receive offers like this and this also includes me. So basically it doesn't matter where you apply because even if you apply to a quote unquote competitive college, you can still receive an offer from a different college and it's not like you're less likely to receive an offer than if you applied to a quote-unquote less competitive college. So I didn't explain this before but open applications are essentially where you say I don't care what college I go to and Cambridge will randomly assign you one or more likely they'll assign you to one which is less subscribed than the other colleges to balance out the numbers. And just a quick note there was something called the summer pool. I think this is now called the August reconsideration pool and this is basically that if your application was strong but you weren't successful in the first round of applications in December, January, you might be considered for the summer pool if your application meets certain criteria. And this tends to be uh, eligibility criteria like attending school in a deprived area. And basically what happens is you apply to the summer pool once you receive your A-level results in August, if you're invited to do so. And this basically gives colleges a second chance to have a look at your application and see if they have any spare places and see if they can make you an offer. So in this way, you can be in the unusual situation Situation of receiving an offer from Cambridge in August, but not too many offers are made by this route and you need to make sure that you get in contact with Cambridge directly to make sure that your application meets these requirements. Okay, so if the admissions data do not affect your chances of receiving an offer from a certain college, then how should you decide where to apply to your college? So some people might look at the academic reputation of a college. So you might have heard of the Tompion's tables. These tables essentially rank the Cambridge colleges in order of academic performance and the proportion of students who go on to receive first class degrees. And you can see that some colleges have a reputation of always scoring highly in these tables, for example, Christ College and Trinity College always tend to be up there. This may suggest that they have better teaching programs and a better set of supervisors to help their students excel in their subjects. There might be an element of truth in there, but I don't want you to take this too seriously. This is because even if you get an offer from a college which is in the bottom half of the Tompkins table, they'll still have a great set of supervisors who can guide you and help you to reach your full potential and still get, you know, as high a possible grade as you can or what you wish. The truth is that everyone still receives receives 
the same formal teaching in terms of lectures and practicals. So basically, it's really what you make of it, and there's nothing stopping you from achieving your full potential, uh, no matter what college you go to. And the truth is that supervisors usually supervise at multiple colleges, so it's likely that you'll have the same supervisor as friends you make who go to other colleges. Right, so I've basically said don't think about the admissions data or the academic reputation of the college. So what are we looking for when you're applying to Cambridge for the colleges? One thing to consider is the location of the college. So in most cases, this is not a deal-breaking factor because Cambridge is a small city and you can pretty much get anywhere in the city with a bike in under 15 minutes. But there are some differences. So if you're right in the center of town, you might get away with not even needing a bike and just being able to walk to lectures and walk to everywhere you need to. If you're a bit further out, like my college, which is Robinson, and even there are a group of colleges called the Hill Colleges. So if you see on the map, these are like Churchill, Fitzwilliam, like Lucy Cavendish, that area. You can still get everywhere pretty quickly on the bike. And I still know people in these colleges who refuse to bike and want to walk everywhere and they manage just fine. The only two which are a bit further out, but still pretty accessible by bike, are Girton College and Homerton College. But these colleges are really lovely, so I don't want to put you off applying there. Proximity to the centre of town might not be as important as proximity to your department. So most departments will be in the centre of town. So Downing site is where the lectures and practicals take place for medicine and natural sciences. There's also Sidgwick site where a lot of the humanities subjects takes place. And you can also see the engineering department which is on the south end of the city centre. Some labs for engineering and some physical sciences I think take place in the West Cambridge site which as the name suggests is to the west of the city. Also if you're a particularly sporty person and this is quite near the university sports centre and other sports facilities. Bear in mind that some colleges get their students off-site accommodation for a few years of their degree. So where you apply, you might actually be living to somewhere a little bit different than what you expected. So watch out for that. But again, usually these are not too far out. It's also worth considering the vibe of the college as this is a place where you'll be studying, living, socialising in, for about three to four years of your life. So things to look out for for Vibe is to think about the size of the college. Smaller colleges in theory means they're more tight-knit communities where you might recognize more people around in college. And larger colleges, in theory might have more things going on or more facilities. Some colleges are known to have a lot of people studying certain subjects. So for Trinity, that's maths. For Gonville and Keys, they have a lot of medics. And at Churchill, there are a lot of natural science students. I found this really helpful document online, which I need to give credit to this new college Pontefract organization, which basically outlines and compares the Cambridge colleges according to size, their academic reputation, and also their distance away from the center of town. And again, I wouldn't pay too much attention to the academic reputation of a college because this is mainly based on their like research output and their famous alumni, and this will not really affect your academic journey or your personal experience studying there. Other factors that affect the vibe of a place is the architecture. So Cambridge, of course, is very picturesque. You have some of these really old, beautiful colleges along the riverside, and they have these beautiful courts. Other colleges which are further out may have more modern buildings. And you can get a feel for what the vibe of the college is like by attending an open day. And a lot of these colleges also have virtual tours, which were put up over the last few years due to COVID. The beauty of a college matters to some people, but I don't think this is a big factor. And I'm not just saying this because Robinson College is known for its red bricks. It's really the people that you meet and the friends that you make which are what shape your experience at college. Obviously, it's hard to assess this as an outsider looking in when you're applying. But these days, there are so many YouTubers from Cambridge who are making vlogs, which give a little insight into their lives. So you can almost kind of have a feel about what it might be like to study at that college. Another thing to consider is the accommodation. So accommodation varies a lot in price and also what you get. It can vary from like 110, 120 pounds per week, up to around the 200 pounds per week mark. And this discrepancy is dependent on whether you have an ensuite, the actual size of the room, the facilities like the kitchens, the location of the room, whether it's center of town or an offsite accommodation, and also the length of the contracts. So some colleges offer 30 week contracts where you have to vacate your rooms during the Christmas and Easter holidays, and some offer longer contracts close to the 40 weeks where you keep your room for pretty much the whole year. I have a video going into detail about my accommodation in Robinson so you can go check that one out. For this it's hard to specify like what each college offers for accommodation in this single video. But what I recommend you do is that you come up with a list of criteria which are essential for you. 
So whether that's an ensuite or kitchens with certain facilities and make a spreadsheet and then do some research and see which colleges offers what you're looking for. With the kitchens, I would say most of the kitchens are quite basic for undergraduates. Some of them only give you like a microwave and a toaster, not even hobs. T it tends to be when you go to further out colleges, they have bigger kitchen facilities and even ovens sometimes. But having said that, most colleges have a very good food in their canteen or what we call hall. And this food is also subsidized by the university and by the college. So they're usually quite good value. So it is possible to go for university without ever having to cook for yourself. In terms of facilities and societies, there are some different between colleges. So some colleges will have large extensive sports fields on site, whereas others will have smaller ones or one shared with other colleges on an off-site place. And a few colleges also have swimming pools too. But I wouldn't worry too much about this because in reality, if you are a serious sports person, then you're more likely to be using the central university facilities and training with them rather than college facilities. Societies and sports at college level is really a more chill way of enjoying the activity during your time at university. And this is how I got into like Ultimate Frisbee in my first year. And even if a college doesn't have a society which you're looking for, you can always see if there's a university society for that or you can set up your own society. Finally, I'll touch on financial support as this also can vary between colleges. Obviously for UK students, there's the government support in terms of tuition fee loans, and also maintenance loans. There's also a Cambridge University wide bursary scheme for those who are eligible for that. Some colleges offer additional financial support on top of what the university offers. I can't say I am an expert on this, but I do know that St. John's are the most generous in their bursaries. I've left a link in the description box below, which is essentially a directory of all the finance pages of the different colleges. So you can go check that out and do your own research. Okay, so to conclude the video, I'm gonna give you my personal advice, and that is it really doesn't matter what college you apply to and what college you end up going to. Your time at college and indeed at Cambridge is really what you make of it, and it's the people you meet, the friends that you make, and the memories that you create. And this will be really good wherever you go. Pretty much every student you talk to at Cambridge will say their college is the best because of the allegiance that you make with the college and also with the community. And just to end on a funny story. So I didn't do too much research into colleges when I applied. As I've said before, I applied to Jesus College and when the offer came through on an email in January, I saw that I'd been given an offer from Robinson College. And that's the first time I'd actually heard that Robinson was a college at that time. But looking back on it, I'm so glad that things transpired in the way that they did because we have a really amazing community at Robinson, particularly amongst the medics in our year. And I've really enjoyed my time at college so far. So thanks so much for watching this video. If you liked it, please consider subscribing to the channel for more content about Cambridge University. For more application advice, you might want to check out this video where I talk through my Cambridge application journey and how I got in to study medicine. Anyway, take care and I'll catch you in the next video.